Today we're going to take a quiz on the muscles of the back. These muscles uh, as a group are often referred to as the erectors or the paraspinal muscles. So we're going to try and identify individual muscles of the back and hopefully by me taking the quiz with you I can give you memory devices and um, a practical way to remember and just make studying anatomy a little bit more fun than if you were doing this alone reading a textbook. Let's get to it. My name is Anthony Davis, and this is Shape Shift Wellness, the channel that uses science to explore fitness, yoga, and meditation so you can take your health into your own hands. If you like that sort of thing, subscribe to my channel. Now let's take a quiz together. Okay, since we're taking this together, I will give you um, sort of a leading ups type of explanation of how I'm thinking, and hopefully that helps you, but and that'll buy you a little bit of time to come up with the answer. But if you need more time, just make sure to pause once I read the question and you can think about it yourself. All right, let's get started. So uh, this is using an app, by the way, called Complete Anatomy. Okay, so question is, how many groups of erector spinae muscles are there? Well, uh, everybody I know in school uses the same acronym. Uh, I guess it's a little bit inappropriate, but as far as acronyms go, you know, there are some acronyms that are, <laughs> I will not repeat on this channel. They are too vulgar, but those are the ones that you never forget. Anyway, this one's pretty tame, so I'll say it. Um, there are three groups. The answer is three. And the reason I know that is because we use an acronym going from the their outside group to the middle group to the inside group. We say, I love sex. So it's iliocostalis, which is a group of muscles that uh, connects from uh, the ilium down here all the way up to the costals, the rib cage. And then there's uh, the uh, longissimus muscles that are sort of in intermediary there, and they're really long. And then there's the spinalis group of muscles that are right next to the spine. Oh no, did I not click submit? I think it's going to mark me wrong on that one. There are definitely three groups. That's definitely true. Now, anyway, uh, what is this muscle here that they've identified? So we are looking at a muscle that of those three groups, which do you think it is? Well, we had three groups moving from the outside to the inside, I, L, S. So we're looking at the S, which is spinalis. By the way, again, spinalis, spine, spinous process. That's how I uh, just associate those things. So what are we looking at? Uh, well, our possible answers are spinalis capitis or spinalis thoracis, right? Because I've crossed out all the other answers. None of the other answers make any sense. Well, thoracis would be the thoracic spine. So that's, that's definitely correct. Uh, and the capitis would be um, the skull. So it's thoracis, definitely. Cool. Next question. Identify this muscle. So, uh, okay, so this one, they, by the way, are looking at this muscle. Uh, so let's see what that muscle looks like here. So does it go up to the skull? It does not go up to the skull. It only touches the cervical spine, which is your neck. So if it, so we're looking at a muscle that's really close to the spine, so probably a spinalis muscle. And uh, so we're gonna erase all the other ones. So it's either spinalis capitis or spinalis cervicis. And since it doesn't touch the skull, which the skull we would call, like what do you put on your hat, on your head? You put a cap on your head. So spinalis cap capitis would be if it were touching your skull. But this muscle, as you can see, does not touch your skull. It's only on your neck, so it's spinalis capitis. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, so we're pointing to a really long muscle here. And again, really what we want to look at is where is it in relationship to the spine? So here's the, um, you know, the spinous processes. This muscle is pretty far away from that, so it's not a spinalis. So we can cross out those. And it is connecting, is it connecting to the skull? skull. No, it is not connecting to the skull. It connects right here to the transverse process of the C1 vertebra. Uh, so not a capitis. So we're looking at a cervicis and there's only one option that says cervicis in the name and it's a longissimus cervicis, which makes sense because it is not near the spinous processes. So next. Okay. So identify the muscle. Okay, so that might look like the same muscle. It's not the same 
muscle because uh, you can see so here's the transverse process of C1 and so this muscle connects to the mastoid process right here so it connects right here to the spine or sorry to the skull and since it connects to the skull we're looking for an answer that has cap capitis because you put a cap on your head in the name so we've got spinalis capitis or longissimus capitis well is this next to the center of the spine and the spinous processes no so it's not spinalis capitis it has to be longissimus capitis also it's a really long finger-like muscle which fits the description of a longissimus all right, next. So we're looking at a group of muscles. Um, well, where are we in the spine? Are we in the cap? Is it a capitis? No. Is it a cervices? Is it in the neck? No. Um, it's either in the thoracic or the lumbar spine. I don't like that they put the arrow kind of in between the two junctions, but let's use our other intelligent, uh, you know, rationale to, to reason our way out of this one. So we've got Iliocostalis lumborum, maybe. Spinalis thoracis, mm, no. Uh, Longissimus thoracis, now that sounds like it might be the right answer because we have this muscle that goes up and it connects to the ribs here. It's not, and you, and you can see there's a more medial group. So it is Longissimus thoracis for sure. So let's uh, continue there. Okay, so what do we got here? Now we're looking the, okay, the most medial group of erector spinae muscles are the iliocostalis muscles. Is that true or false? Is it true or false that the most medial group of erector spinae muscles are the iliocostalis muscles? Well, remember your acronym. We start from the outside and we work our way inside. And so our outside muscle is uh, the furthest to the outside is the eye in I love sex. So I is for iliocostalis, then longissimus, then spinalis. So medial, what does the word medial mean? Middle, midline. So the closest to the midline would be the spinalis group. So this statement is false. What next? Okay, what muscle is this? All right, this muscle, as you can see, is not close to the spine because here's the spinous processes. So we're nowhere near the spinous processes. Uh, so it is not a spinalis, not that one. Uh, and then what region of the spine are we in? Is it lumbar? No. Is it capitis? Is it the skull? No. Is it the neck? No. So it has to be thoracis. It's iliocostalis thoracis. It's pretty far away from the spine. It connects to the ribs, which are the iliocostal costal part, and it's in the thoracic spine. So we have all the boxes checked. Identify this muscle. Well, are we close to the spine or far away from the spine? We're far away, so maybe it's an iliocostalis muscle. And it makes sense because it's going from the ilium here to the costals, the ribs here, right? So that would make sense. And what do we have, iliocostalis lumborum? Perfect, that's exactly what I wanna see. Next. Uh, the Oh, complete the following sentence. The erector spinae muscles are involved in... Do, 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 uh, okay, so these are all possible actions. So you just need to know what the muscles on the back actually do. So if they're on the back, then they're going to pull us backwards. And this yoga people would call this uh, back bend. But in anatomy, we call that extension. That's the main thing that the erectors do is they create extension. So I'm gonna look for an answer that says extension. Bingo, only one answer has extension in the answer. So that's definitely our answer, but let's just make sure. So the other possibilities are lateral flexion. Well, that makes sense because if you have a group of muscle like this and on one side they pull you, they will bend you to that side, bend you to the other side and rotation, which will rotate you and rotate you, right? So that is correct. Yay, oh cool, it gave me that one answer. I'm so happy. I love getting 10 out of 10 on <laughs> on anatomy quizzes that I don't get a grade for and nobody is gonna care. <laughs>
All right, cool. Validate me. Complete anatomy. Validate me. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Oh, and you know, like the stuff and subscribe, obviously. <laughs>